Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, how do I find slope from graphs, tables, ordered pairs, and real world situations? So let's start with graphs. To find slope from a graph, you just are going to do rise over run between two perfect points. So this one says find the slope of the graphed line. They gave us two points here, but they are really far apart. So I'm going to see if I can find any perfect points closer together. If you wanted to do slope formula with these two points, you could. But I think it's easier to do rise over run whenever you can make a small right triangle. So I see a perfect point right there, and I see another one right here at the y-intercept. And if I continue that pattern, it works for the whole line, so I know that those are two perfect points. So I'm going to draw my slope triangle now. And then I'm going to count the rise. It looks like I go up 2 over 1, 2, 3. So my slope for this line is 2 thirds. Okay, next one, first thing I notice is that my line is going down. So I'm going to go ahead and put that negative sign so I do not forget. And same thing, I have two points that are really far apart. I'm going to see if I can find one, which it looks like the origin is one that's closer together. And then I'm going to draw my slope triangle between those two perfect points. I'm going to count the rise. It is one two, three, four, five, and the run is two. So my slope is negative five halves. Real world graphs, you will also use rise over run to find the slope, especially with real world graphs, with all graphs, but especially with real world graphs. You need to pay careful attention to the scale of the graph. So let's look at this first one. It says the line graph can be used to determine the total inches of rain that have fallen after a certain number of hours. What is the slope? So I notice it's positive, And if you notice, the scale is counting by sixes. So on my rise, I'm going to have to count by sixes. So let's see if we can find two perfect points. It looks like the origin is one. And then I see another one right here. So I'm going to draw my slope triangle. And my rise is one, two, three spaces, but remember we're counting by sixes. So it's going to be six, 12, 18 for the rise. Over my x-axis, the number of hours is still counting by ones. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five for the run, for the run. Okay, now I'm going to change this one to a decimal because when we're talking about how much it's raining per hour, we wouldn't usually say, say 18 fifth inches per hour. We'd probably say that as a decimal. So 18 divided by 5 is 3.6. So the slope here would be 3.6, and that would represent 3.6 inches per hour. Okay, the next one says the line graph can be used to determine the ounces of chocolate filling up a chocolate fountain after a certain number of minutes. What is the slope? So I'm going to look at my y-axis. I notice that it's counting by fours this time. So I'm going to be I'm going to have to be careful when I'm doing the rise again. So I see a perfect point at the origin and I see another one right here. I'm going to draw my slope triangle. The rise is four spaces, but that's really four. 8, 12, 16, since the y-axis was counting by fours. And then the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to change this to a decimal because they would probably talk about ounces in decimals. It'd be 3.2 ounces per minute. Okay, number five and six, we are dealing with ordered pairs. And to find slope from ordered pairs, we're going to use slope formula. So five says, what is the slope of the line that goes through the ordered pairs below? First thing I'm going to do is label these points x1, y1, x2, and y2. And now I can easily plug into slope formula. It'll be y2 minus y1, so 13 minus 1. 
all over x2 minus x1, so 9 minus negative 9. 13 minus 1 is 12. 9 minus negative 9 is the same thing as 9 plus 9, which is 18. And 12 over 18, those are both divisible by 3. So it would simplify to, oh, they're both divisible by 6. I can go a little bit further. 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. So that slope is 2 thirds. Okay, next one, same thing. I'm going to label some points x1, y1, x2, and y2. And now I'm going to use slope formula to find the slope between them. y2 minus y1 would be negative 7 minus 13. All over x2 minus x1 would be 12 minus negative 4. Negative 7 minus 13 is negative 20. Negative 12 minus negative 4 is the same thing as negative 12 plus 4, which is 16. Both of those numbers are divisible by 4. Negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So the slope simplifies to 5 fourths. Okay, tables just show several ordered pairs, so we will do the same thing. We will use slope formula. We will just pick two points from the table to plug into slope formula. So number seven says the table shows the linear relationship. That's how we know we can find slope because it's going to be a line between the number of miles driven and the number of gallons of gas remaining in a vehicle. What is the amount of gallons used per mile? So I am just going to use the first two points. You can use any points on the table, but I'm going to use the first two to label as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. And now I'll plug into slope formula by doing 12 minus 14 for y2 minus y1 all over 5 minus 0. And I get negative 2 over 5. We probably would talk about the gallons in decimals. So negative 2 divided by 5 as a decimal is negative 0 0.4. So they use 0 0.4 gallons per mile. Okay, next one says the table shows the linear relationship between the number of dog toys purchased and the total cost. What is the cost per dog toy? So we can use any two points. I'm actually gonna choose to use the first one and the last point this time because those are the only two that I see that have whole numbers. You could have used this, but I'm just choosing not to use it since it has the 0.5. Okay, now I have my points picked out, so I'm going to do y2 minus y1. It'll be 87 minus 12 all over x2 minus x1. That'll be 10 minus 0. So 87 minus 12 is 75, and 10 minus 0 is 10. Now I'm going to do 75 divided by 10, and I get 7.5. So that means the cost per dog toy is $7.50. It was $7.50 per dog toy.